Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am also back to talk a little bit about the Cristinelli's. I know I've mentioned it in a couple of my reading wrap-ups since I have been reading books for, for that. The idea of the Cristinelli's, it was set up by Cristinelle from SSF Reader, who is curious to see if you get a whole bunch of booktubers who read a lot of new releases and then ask them to nominate their favorites, how is that list going to look compared to the Hugos? I know she asked a, a bunch of people, I think about seven of us actually ended up voting or participating, and so our list is somewhat different than the Hugos. I'm here today to go over the novella list which I have completed and to let you know which one my favorite is. And then if one of these books is also on the Hugos, I'll let you know that as well so you can kind of see that comparison. So for the Cristinelli's, we had seven nominees, whereas the Hugo's has six. So I am going to start with my least favorite and work my way up. So the least favorite is Ogres by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I actually DNF'd this. It just wasn't working for me. I understand the concept behind it. It's about a young man who ends up having a rebellion against the overlords and finding out how the overlords came to be. It just wasn't written in a style that I was connecting to. It's written in second person and I find that very hit, and hit or miss for me. Luckily, this is the second book I've read by Tchaikovsky, so I know that I like his writing, typically. I, I will continue to try reading other things for him. This is one of the nominees for the Hugos. So next is Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. This is the second in what I believe is a duology. I have not heard of another novella in the works, though the way this one ends, it's possible. It could happen. This one didn't work for me as well as the first one, and I think that's just because the themes in this were things that I have known already in my life. And the first one connected more with what I was feeling. So this continues to follow Dex and Mossflower, but this time they're leaving the wilderness and going into society and Mossflower is not getting to meet the other humans and ask his question, what do you want? And I think that's kind of the central theme is None of us actually know what we want. It, it could be what we want in this moment. There's not a central unifying thing that everybody wants that someone from the outside can give us. Really, we have to do these things for ourselves. And I felt like Dex was going through more of a who am I period of life, which didn't really resonate with me. Whereas in the first book he was going back to connect with what had been before and process his world. Like I love in the first book I loved how it's like, I have never heard a cricket. I want to go hear a cricket sing. Okay. That's very compelling to me. This one just didn't work as well. It but it's Becky Chambers. She brings up some great ideas. You get to see more of the society and how even in human society there's different pockets of it. You know, very, very well written. And I gave this four stars. So the rest of these books are four and five stars. They're good books. They're just... This one wasn't one of my favorites. Now, these next three books, I've actually rated the same on Cobb Pile. They, they came out to the same number on the 10-point scale section. All four stars. And I think just in my personal rating, the next one I'm going to talk about is The Jade Setter of Jan Loon. This is a prequel to the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee, where we are following Pulo, who is a Greenbone, but he is apprenticed to a jade setter. And so a lot of the 
green bones who can handle more jade go to him to get jade crafted for different things that they are wanting. So I know one of the heads of the family, one of the big clan families, put gives a jade knife to be fixed and it gets stolen. And she is not known as a forgiving clan head. So there's a mystery going on. The police are involved. And Pulu was like, I know who it is. It was your nephew. But the old Jade Setter isn't wanting to throw his nephew under the bus because he knows that his nephew was put up to this task by someone else. And it just kind of shows you a peek inside the different societies and how they work. And you get to meet a lot of the principal characters from the first book. I think that if you are not sure if the Greenbone Saga is going to work for you, I think this prequel novella is a great entry point because you kind of get the rhythm of the life. You get to find out some of the background information of this society before getting invested into a more of a mafia fantasy story. And then I'm going to talk about Come Up It's Served Cold by Marion Deeds. This is a paranormal story set in the 1920s with magic users and shifters and this is set in Seattle I believe I think it's Seattle if it's not Seattle it's Portland it's East Coast and there's a rich elite magicians that are going through and trying to codify the law so that there's only certain type of magic that can be used that's seen as uh, good. So then if you use other types of magic, you are breaking the law and thus a criminal. And then they also don't like shifters. And then this is where Dolly Smith comes in. She takes a job at working for one of these guys who's doing this as a companion to his daughter to help her get sober and to help her turn her life around. But really, Dolly is a thief and you're then going back and forth in the timeline to see how she's going to execute her plan. And it's a lot of fun. Next I have Even Though I Knew the End by C.L. Polk. This is nominated for the Hugos. And this is another paranormal story, also kind of set around the 1920s, but this time in Chicago. This is following Helen, but she has like a second name as well. I think it was like Helena or Elena, something like that. Um, she knows that her life is about to end. She had made a crossroads pack, so she knew she only had 10 more years. She just wants to spend her last weekend with the woman she loves. Up to this point, she's been a private eye investigator. She's asked to do one more job, so she's like, fine, I'll take it. And things are weird. And then she meets her estranged brother, who's part of the society magical society that she left after she made this crossroads deal. The plot thickens. This was one where I was not expecting how things were going to turn out. But the way it ended, I really enjoyed actually. And I'd be interested to see more from these characters in the future. So, hey, C.L. Polk, if you ever see this, can you write more about these characters? What happens next? I'm curious. Right. Then I have What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. So now we're getting into my five stars. And this is also nominated for the Hugos. This is a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. And it is brilliant. I'm not generally a big horror fan, but I like how Kingfisher did it. It's not gory or just trying to make you tense. It's more of a s slow psychological creep. So you're, and you're getting the clues so you can kind of put them together. It's more like a mystery horror kind of thing. And it really worked for me. Also, it helps that I've seen like the old black and white version of this movie. 
um, but that it also helps that I have seen the black and white old version of the fall of the house of usher and the vibes from that movie I felt them here in this book really loved it so now my favorite novella that was nominated for the Cristinelli's and alas was not nominated for the Hugos is Nebula Vibrations by Annie Carl. This is about a woman who is woken up in the future to find she's been taken from Earth against her will and cryofreezed and they're now waking her up so that she can go talk to these aliens that they've come into contact and she can talk to them because she doesn't have all the implants that the rest of society now has. When she wakes up, she's just pissed to find out, like, you stole me, you took me away from what I wanted, from where I was, what I wanted to do, how dare you, and now you want me to go do something else for you. Very interesting take on a character, very reluctant kind of main character. I loved it. If you haven't read Nebula Vibrations, go out and read it. It is amazing. So these are the novellas that were nominated for the Cristinelli Awards. I have now finished reading them, and I am curious to see how things shake out when the final votes get done. I am still working on the novels that have been nominated, but in the future you can expect another video like this. If you've read any of these or all of these, please, I want to know your opinions down below. Thank you, and have a great day.